the poem we're going to read today is from Gu Shi Shi Jiu Shou. Gu Shi Shi Jiu Shou. Tiao Tiao Qian Niu Xin. This is actually not the title of the poem. It's the first line of the poem. It's one of the 19 old poems from Han Dynasty. That's 200, roughly 200 AD. So it's from a long time ago. This is the, we know, many of us know the year of the ox is soon coming up on February 12th. This is a beautiful set at the Metropolitan Museum. Uh, the 12 animals of Chinese zodiac. Uh, you can see the ox is singled out while with a human body. This form, uh, in fact, has been popular since Tang Dynasty in China with the zodiac, the head, and a human body. Uh, that's about um, 7th century, so hundreds of years ago. But this beautiful set is from 18th to 19th century Qing Dynasty, made of jade. Um, so we chose the poem. I uh, want to take the opportunity to talk about the ox uh, and touch upon the cultural symbolism of niu. That's the Chinese word for ox or water buffalo. Uh, we may come across many different meanings of the ox in Chinese culture. Uh, usually it symbolizes patient, being patient, hardworking, and resilient. Um, and sometimes also strong. Today, we will mainly focus on two stories related to the ox. So hopefully when you encounter the ox in Chinese art and uh, beyond in the future, I hope today's session may help to provide some context of understanding. So I will first in fact, introduce our guest speaker, Sang Su Satin, who's generously contributed to her time to share her story and artwork of the ox herder. Ms. Satin is a renowned artist, and we are lucky to have uh, Ms. Satin at China Institute uh, offering brush painting courses for many years. She has a hard deadline to leave the session by 12.30, so I will be very brief to just uh, give a, 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 a general background of her artwork. So you can see the title of this artwork is The Zen Ox Herder Parable. In Zen, a herd boy's search for his lost ox has served as a parable for a practitioner's pursuit of enlightenment. The parable tells a story about a herd boy losing his ox, following its tracks to recover the animal, and eventually in the end, achieve enlightenment. In the 11th century, a Song Dynasty Zen master, Guo An Shi Yuan, codified the parable into 10 verses, often recorded and illustrated with 10 paintings which become very popular in China and Japan. So today we are going to look at the, the 10 verses version that's created by Ms. Sansuk Staten. So with that, I will stop sharing. I will turn it to Sansuk. Hi Sansuk, it's all yours. Okay, thank you. So good, there's the one. Okay, so hi, um, this is Song Suk Seton. Anyhow, I just want to show you um, this 10, you know, um, pieces of artwork uh, about um, this uh, ox herd of parallel story. I did this actually um, pieces of about 12 years ago. Um, I was so, you know, some, the Long Island Japanese garden, uh, John Hume garden curator was asking me if I can, if I want to make it my own version of this, uh, this story. So 
I learned it from that time about this story. I didn't know before, but it was a fascinating story. So I, it, I was, you know, thrilled to learn about this. So anyhow, so the story begins. You probably know, some of you know about this story, uh, but, you know, this story begins uh, here. So basically, uh, you know, searching for the ox. Uh, basically, I was using more background of that particular garden. So it was starting with the bamboo garden. Um, and then the next one is, uh, you get to see, uh, do you know this, um, this, this ox is representing uh, basically, you know, um, true nature of your, yourself. And, um, you know, the man basically, basically ox represents a selfless, unbounded reality that is what true nature. And ox herder represents individual ego and or separate self and suffers because of the self clinging, which is preventing him from being free. So that's, that's the probably, I need to explain a little bit about that. So I was, so in order to just, you know, searching for your true self, so that's where I began with uh, struggling with the uh, bamboo forest background. And then, you know, next stage is this one, which is I'm discovering the footprint of, you know, distance, mount, distance garden, in this case of ox. So, so that's kind of stimulating stage now. And then here, you know, um, the man, you know, found, glimpse of ox, you know, kind of distance away. You see the only very small part. Okay. And then the next one is uh, basically, um, you know, you, you're catching the ox. So with a lot of struggle and all that, but anyhow. So the next one is this one. So you basically train, you know, taming the ox. So that's also a lot of work involved there. So, okay, here we are. Next one is riding the, you know, you, you tamed it and then you, you're riding an ox home with the, you know, the flute, you know, a very joyful moment at this point. So this particular building here is a Japanese tea house, but it's, it's, it's a beautiful tea house in Long Island. So anyhow, that's the background. And here we are. Um, at this stage, you the ox was forgotten and then man remains. So, because you found yourself, you know, um, so you don't need an ox anymore. So that's the stage. Okay, and then here, uh, next one is, here we are. So at this point, both ox and self was forgotten. So this circle represents kind of that stage. Okay. And then this one, it's, um, so you're returning to the, you know, source of the universe. So then everything, you know, it looks different. So, and you, you know, you can see the background, the beautiful waterfall and, you know, beautiful nature surrounding your, yourself. Okay, and then here. Uh, and then you finally set yourself, you know, you, you give your hand for, you know, for your local community, you know, entering the marketplace that's um, to give yourself to others. So at this, you know, that's the story behind. It's such a beautiful story, but anyhow. So I'm sure um, many artists actually tried this um, story illustrate uh, throughout the history. I think so far as I know in China, they, show, they have a 
version of it 12, from 12th century or one world. But, you know, many sculptors tried it, their version. I remember seeing some, you know, contemporary version uh, in, in New York City uh, exhibition about 10 years ago in the you know, Japanese gallery, but anyhow. So that's the story. So anyhow, this, I, so I have a still, you know, fond memory of this. Um, when I created this, it, you know, just try to understand what the story was behind. But anyhow, so that's what I can do. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All Thank right. you, Sansa. You okay? Yeah. Uh, Any questions? Or, or, I mean, yeah, do you, if anyone has questions, you can unmute yourself and um, ask the question. We have a few minutes. And Sansuk, do you want to stop sharing the screen or you want to keep the picture up there? Oh, oh whatever, you know, it's okay. You mean, should I stop sharing? That's okay. Yeah, if you can, that will bring everybody up. If anyone has questions, Yes. Yeah, James, please. Yes. Uh huh. Thank you. This uh, this was uh, absolutely beautiful. I loved I loved the artwork, and I loved the story. And I had a question: um, when the ox and the self yeah. are are um, the ox and the self are gone, and there is only a circle. Yes. And I wondered if you could say anything more about. Why it's a circle there? I think many many artists interpret differently, but it's, it's actually the that stage here. I I have a written here. Uh, basically, no longer seek, you don't need a you don't need to seek enlightenment. That no why it where where it does not exist. So I guess this uh, symbol of emptiness of ah. Uh, more or less emptiness symbol of uh, cosmos. Uh, uh -huh. Yes, I see. Yeah. Uh, share, share. I know. <laughs> Thank you, James. It's uh, such a beautiful story, anyhow. Mm -hmm. Well, there is, a, there is a request from the chat room, Sansuk. By any chance, are you willing to show the paintings hand on the wall behind you? By the way, this is uh, Sansuk's studio, right? Okay, you yeah, it is. Students online. Do you actually want to see actual uh, Oxfording, you know, frame? I have it. Oh, so you want to see my own work? Okay. Okay. All right. That's fine. You can okay. do that. I'm but change you need to put the lights on. Yeah. Sorry, not well. You can take a peek into her studio. <laughs> at this point if i may make a comment if i may make a comment on that circle that was just described yes please yes. jeffrey are you speaking okay. yeah correct yeah yes correct. please um my understanding in the um and i might be wrong that in the um buddhist philosophy that the the circle specifically in japanese art re represents total capacity total emptiness to which allows for you can fill it with anything. <clears throat> the most important thing in, in <clears throat> building anything is to have an empty spot. If you have an empty spot, you can fill it with anything you want. And the circle, empty circle, represents the ability to totally fill it with anything that you want to be capable of doing. So it gives a full potential of, of the being, essentially. And as that's, in my opinion, often repeated in Japanese art and Buddhist symbolism. Emptiness is a very important part. <clears throat> you can't build anything unless you have an empty spot for it. <clears throat> in scientific uh, terminology, it's called the Parkinson's law. <clears throat> if you have an empty spot, it's guaranteed to be filled with something. Yeah, in ink, in ink painting, you know, the emptiness is a breathing space. So. You know, it's one of the really most, one of the most important element in ink painting. It's, it's the same probably, yeah, concept in a way, yeah. So very often I feel 
non-painted area is not more important than painted area. So. And Sansa, can you um, please explain the choice of color in your artwork? Oh, you know, oh yeah, I mean, I have, you know, I'm a little bit uh, influenced by also my own Western surrounding. So I became more colorful since I came to America, but here, so this, can you see this piece? Yes. So this four pieces is actually my personal transformation of the, you know, the um, abstraction stage. So I usually start the year from the more representational elements, meaning more yearning stage. And then this is the my experimental stage, exploring stage. And then this is experimenting, exploring. You still keep the, some element of that, you know, the, the representational idea and then exploring. And this is experimenting. At that stage, the number four stage is liberating myself. So I just interpret freely what I, you know, just from my own memory of that particular topic. So I usually, you know, at least four stages I explore to turn to a representational painting to an abstraction. Is that okay? I have a lot of uh, traditional work too, but um, so that's some examples. So you, I have some more traditional ones here. Here's some like a rotors, for example. Um, and I have other, so my topic is from tradition to abstraction. No, actually my abstract painting was originally influenced by uh, music, different music. So, um, what kind of music? So I use different, you know, different kind of music. So actually yes. there's some musician came to me and they asked me to, uh, do a multimedia project. So I um, ended up creating, you know, abstract uh, ink painting because I, I wouldn't, I didn't know how else would I express that music. So, so that was one of the projects um, I, I worked about. Yeah, I've been involved in the abstract, abstraction of the ink painting last 15 years, yeah. Are you talking about symphonic music or single instrument like guitar? Oh no, actually, usually the chamber music. I mean, any music though. And since I've, I've been working with uh, this musician, um, group of musicians, there was a chamber group. And I realized I am doing music too. With I only do music with my brush. That's the difference. <laughs> That's why I felt I, after that experiment. So is that your favorite form that you prefer um, to have something like music to inspire you? Or? Yes, I I feel I think it's it's uh, this you know this Chinese brushes are really so close to the music um, you know just um, as soon as I I listen to music and my brushes you know kind of start moving. <laughs> <laughs> Start yeah, I'm moving, okay. So it's also the beauty of this um, approach is it's, you know, there's such a sensitive paper and then such a sensitive brush. The combination is you naturally create the music. Uh, is your name, is your Korean? name Korean? Korean? Yeah. We're wondering why you sign your name in English. Oh, oh yeah, my name is Song Suk Kong. Yeah, Hong is my um, maiden name. Yeah, it is. But I think my about about four generation um, before my ancestor came from Manjuria or something like that. I heard. So I don't know. Okay, yeah, Hong could be, you know. There are some Korean Hong as well as Chinese Hong, I think, so far as I know. I was just wondering whether you would sign your name 
using English letters because it's more abstract. And then for a more traditional painting, whether you would sign your name with characters. Oh, um, I actually sign kind of initial, initial, I usually write in English, but I have a, uh, seals in Chinese as well as Korean. So I, I use everything because three different languages in, in so depending on the painting and or depending on the, my audience and, you know, um, I'm flexible in that regard, yeah. The Ox series is absolutely charming and it's quite different from the paintings that become more abstract because oh, so okay. even though the Ox parable is kind of abstract idea, you've made okay. it very concrete with the charming okay. figures. <laughs> okay, I love the minimalistic approach. I think to me really less is more. Uh, it's very you know meaningful for for my own you know understanding of inquiry. Yeah, we approve. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure to meet you all. Thank you, Sansuk. All right. Well, Take yeah, care. if you have any more questions about Sansuk and her work, uh, you can leave it in the chat box. And I know Sansuk has to leave uh, soon. Uh, we can uh, gather those questions if it's related to Sansuk. And now we can move on to the next part of today's session. Thank you again, Sansuk. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much. Okay, bye. Bye. All right, so we will come back to the poem. Uh, let me just continue sharing my screen. As Samsuk mentioned, well, actually, well, the ox, the ox doesn't only appear in Chinese art as related to the Zen parable. Uh, on the picture here, you can see there is a wine container in the form of the ox from 16 to 10th century BC, Shang Dynasty. Wow. So On the right, it's, yeah, the, it's, it's one of the most famous uh, painters in Chinese history from Tang Dynasty. Uh, Dai Song, he's most well known for um, painting water buffaloes. Uh, this is a portion of a fighting water buffaloes from his painting. And in Song Dynasty, that's 10th to 13th century, after Dai Song, Li Di, in fact, followed his footprint uh, to uh, paint a lot of actually the, the herd boys and the buffaloes. And this scroll on the right from Japan, as Sansuk mentioned, uh, while well, the the ten verses the ten verses was codified back in twelfth century, and this one is particularly well from Japan, and it's the thirteenth uh, century. It's about that story as well uh, Sansuk shared. It's the earliest known Japanese illustrated copy of the parable and the only existing version with color illustrations. So if you go to the MAT website, you can see more details of the, this scroll as well as the stories and each um, for the 10 verses they have, uh, for each one, there is an English translation there. And paintings of ox from three most famous contemporary Chinese artists. Qi Bai Shi, this one, Li Ke Ran, and Wu Zuo Ren. So you can see a variety of different um, styles. Uh, even though this is not a, a particularly about the 10 verses, but well, now you know. Uh, whenever you see the herd boy and the ox, uh, you know it's never just about the boy and the animal. It truly symbolizes the pursuit of the enlightenment, 
uh, even for people who are not practicing Zen Buddhism, such theme resonates at a philosophical level, which I, I think is one of the reasons why it becomes a common theme in Chinese art. So for most of us, even if we cannot paint an ox or water buffalo, we may be able to write the character, which being pictographic still captures an abstract picture of an ox. So if you have a, a, a pen and, and, and paper, you can take it out and maybe practice a little bit. On the left is the various forms of the char character for Neo. On the oracle bones, that's the earliest, that's even before Shang Dynasty, before the bronze uh, wine container we just saw. And the right is, you know, the current written form. And do you know how to write it? Just very quickly, in case any one of you. So we have something like a stroke order to help to practice and to memorize, because there are thousands of Chinese characters in order for us to memorize how to write it. The stroke order is extremely important. Even though being creative, you can start anywhere you want. All right. Okay, finally, let's take a look at the poem. It's a little bit of stretch to say that it has something to do with the ox, but there is, uh, you can see from the title. Again, we have pinyin here, so now you can um, please keep yourself muted and you can read after me. Gu shi, shi jiu shou. Tiao Tiao Qian Niu Xin. There is a Niu there. So there's something to do with the ox or the ox herd. Uh, the poem is a well known one from the 19 classical poems or old poems in the second century AD. Uh, let's take a look of the entire poem here. And let me first read the poem all together. Uh, please listen to the pronunciation. And at this point, I will uh, invite you to also uh, listen to my pronunciation and look at the translation on the right by Stephen Owen. Uh, for our new friends, just a reminder that uh, we will not have time to go through the meanings and hope the translation side by side with the Chinese version would help to get the meanings across. So here we go. I will start from the beginning. Tiao Tiao Qian Niu Xin. Tiao Tiao Qian Niu Xin. Jiao Jiao He Han Ni. Xian Xian Zhuo Su Shou. Zha Zha Nong Ji Zhu. Zhong Ri. 不成章,氣氣淋如雨。河漢清且淺,相去復幾許。盈盈一水間,默默不得語. So this is to get a sense of what the entire poem would sound in Mandarin. Um, as you can see, it's not, not at all. It's not at all about the ox, but there is a character here. Oh, no, actually there are two characters, not the Chinese character, but character in the story. One is, we can see, oh, just one second, I have to move this bar in, in front of my, in my, on my screen. Okay, there is a character Niu Lang in the referred in the first line, Tiao Tiao Qian Niu Xin. And a second character, Zhi Nu, in referred in the second line, Jiao Jiao He Han Nu. So the ox herd in the first line, 
and the female character, the maid in the river of the stars, also called Zhi Nu, the weaver girl. They are, in fact, the characters in China's, one of China's earliest mythology that first appeared in the Book of Songs around 500 BC. The story has many versions, so in brief, my version to share today here is the ox herd, Niu Lang. Oh, sorry, let me start from Zhi Nu. Zhi Nu is a um, goddess in the jade palace in the sky, falls in love with the ox herd, Niu Lang, a regular guy on the earth, a human. Sounds familiar. So naturally, their love is not approved by the gods, and hence they are separated. Zhi Nu in the sky, while Niu Lang on the earth. Only one day in a year, they are allowed to reunite by crossing a bridge made of magpies. That day, on February, not on February 14th, is hence considered as the China, uh, Chinese Valentine's Day. It's in fact July 7th in lunar calendar. Later on, they both become a star in Chinese constellation. That's how the Qian Niu Xing and Zhi Nu Xing are still there and can be seen separated by the Milky Way. So in Chinese mythology and folk culture, the story of Niu Lang and Zhi Nu represents a forever lasting longing for love. So as it often happens, Chinese Lunar New Year is very close to Valentine's Day here. So that's, that's another reason that this poem is chosen, even though it's not a completely happy story, but at least they get together. So finally, let's read each line together. Uh, so as a reminder, I will read uh, twice. The first time I will pause after each word or each um, line, and then I will read the entire line um, and you can, and pause so that well, you really can follow me. All right, here we go. Tiao Tiao. Qian. Niu. Xing. Tiao Tiao, Qian Niu Xing. Jiao Jiao, He, Han, Nu. Jiao Jiao, He, Han, Nu. Xian Xian Zhuo Su Shou Xian Xian Zhuo Su Shou Zha Zha Nong Ji Zhu Zha Zha Nong Ji Zhu Zhong Ri Bu Cheng Zhang Zhong Ri Bu Cheng Zhang Qi Ti Ling Ru Yu Qi Ti Ling Ru Yu Hanh 
看，清，且，浅。河汉清且浅，相去数几许。相去复几许？盈盈，溢，水，见，盈盈。一水剑，默默不得语，默默不得语。That's the entire poem. So perhaps what、well, we can read the poem all together,、uh, together, starting from the top, the the title. I will pause after every two lines after the title. 迢迢牵牛星。迢迢牵牛星，皎皎河汉女。纤纤擢素手，札札弄机杼终日不成章，泣涕零如雨。河汉清且浅，相去复几许？盈盈一水剑，默默不得语。I want to point out for this poem, particularly, well, you can notice well there are quite some double syllable words that makes this poem truly musical. Uh, for those who are studying Chinese language, you often will come across characters repeated、uh, in one word、uh, that makes it、um, more descriptive、um, and also more expressive in terms of the degree. For example, "tiao tiao tiao" on its own means far away, and together it gives the sense that it's more descriptive. It's really far away. But also at the same time, softening the tone, so that makes this、um, this whole musical、uh, element in this、uh, poem particularly I find charming. So maybe we can just read the two syllable words together after me, 迢迢，皎皎，纤纤。札札，盈盈，默默。
So last to bring us back to Chinese New Year or something that what we use today. Um, I, I wonder if any of you come across this phrase, Zhen Niu. And what does that mean? Zhen means true, real. Niu, we know the word new now. Zhen Niu means if you want to tell somebody you do a excellent job or you are great, you can say Ni Zhen Niu. And another phrase, well, especially for this year, Niu Qi Chong Tian. Qi means air, means uh, breath. Niu Qi Chong Chong is thrust into something or burst into something. Tian, that's the sky. Niu Qi Chong Tian. Well, I chose this um, stamp. Uh, from China that sort of like representing a strong and a predominant presence of the bull or the, the water buffalo or the ox that usually describe a positive energy or the predominant in, uh, presence uh, and the, the, the kind of strength that somebody would have. And it's a really positive word, uh, especially uh, for the year of the ox. So if you, you may come across, especially this year, you can see a lot of images and you can, you may come across this Niu Qi Chong Tian uh, in many places celebrating the Lunar New Year. All right, that's it for today. This is the last um, slide. Uh, we encourage you if you have any questions you can contact us and also you can go to the youtube channel to see the uh, the this session and the previous session as well uh, let me stop sharing oh by the way um, for chinese new year we have lots of um programs coming up uh, so i encourage you if you haven't uh, done so, sign up our e-newsletter. Uh, we have a music program talking about Chinese New Year. We collaborate with the um, Bard College, US China Music Institute, and they have a virtual concert on February 13th um, at their Fisher Center. If you haven't been there, it's beautiful. Uh, so so it's, uh, it's um, a lot of activities and for for kids, I, I do see we have quite some young audience today. Uh, we have a family celebration on February 13th during the day, and it has line dance and it has like um, workshops for dumpling making and arts and crafts, all virtual online. So you can tune in from home and have some fun with us.